The Tony Elumelu Foundation, an African non-profit organization founded in 2010 by Tony O. Elumelu and headquartered in Lagos, Nigeria, will on Friday make selection announcements for its 2024 cohorts of its Tony Elumelu Foundation Entrepreneurship Program. Joining us now on the show is Somachi Chris Atuloka, CEO of Tony Elumelu Foundation. Good morning. Welcome to the program. Good morning. Thank you so much for having me. It is great to have you on the program. Now, uh, in the broader context of Africa's socioeconomic landscape, why does the Tony, El Tony Elumelu Foundation firmly believe that entrepreneurship holds the key to unlocking the continent's vast potential and driving sustainable development? I think that our mission in empowering young African entrepreneurs from all 54 African countries is rooted in our belief in Africapitalism. Africapitalism is economic philosophy founded by Mr. Tony Elumelu, which states that the private sector, especially young entrepreneurs, must play the leading role in the socioeconomic transformation of the African continent. And this draws from Mr. Tony Elumelu's own experience as a young entrepreneur, amassing the wealth that he has today, and realizing that to develop the continent from the ground up, from the grassroots up, we must empower our young African entrepreneurs give them the training, the funding, the mentorship, the coaching, so that in turn they can start businesses, scale these businesses, employ people, help to alleviate poverty on our continent, and ensure inclusive economic empowerment. So this is why the foundation is focused on young entrepreneurs. We've been doing this since 2010, and we'll continue to do this because entrepreneurs are the lifeblood of the African continent. Well, so much good to have you on the program, and congratulations on the great work you are doing you so with much. the Tony Lumelu Foundation. Thank but you so talk much. to us about partnerships, alliances that the Tony Lumelu Foundation continues to forge across 54 African countries with governments, academia, NGOs, and other entities. Yes. How is it? Is it? What is the process forging these partnerships and alliances with? multiple stakeholders. Thank you so much, Dr. Abati. I think that the work that we do is so enormous. The scale is so gigantic. No one organization or no one institution can journey this road alone. And so that's why our list of global partners from across the world have identified the work that we do at the Tony L. Mello Foundation as the most transformative model to transform and change the African continent for the better. Our entrepreneurs in 2015 have gone on to create over 400,000 jobs. We've disbursed $100 million to them as seed capital grants. They started their small businesses, they scaled these businesses, and they're creating jobs and transforming the different communities and the larger economy. So our global partners have seen the work that we do and realized that to change the African continent, they need to, local with, they need to partner with the local partner that has the expertise, the networks, the reach, and the know-how to transform the continent in this manner. So our list of partnerships include the European Union, include the German Development Agency, include the UNDP, the United Nations Development Program, even the US government through the USADF. So our partners have identified us as the most transformative partner on ground, and so we continue to partner with them to reach and scale our program to empower additional young entrepreneurs across all 54 African countries. Mm. And, and the impact, I must have to say, has been ginormous, to say the least. I mean, if, if I can use that word, and it's International you know, Women's Month, and there's a need to advance you know, the cause of women, foster you know, gender equity and inclusion and all of that. And I see that Tony Lumilu Entrepreneurship Program intends to support and prioritize women entrepreneurs in his next years. I mean, I've, I've seen a lot of them go through the system, and they have done extremely very well. Yeah. So, I mean, how, how are you fordering this in, in this month? No, I think that for us, Women's Month is every month. Mm -hmm. We continue to empower women entrepreneurs because as our co-founder, Dr. Elumeli, would often say, when you empower a woman, you empower entire communities. And so we realize the sensitivity of looking for young women entrepreneurs and giving them the funding, the training, the mentorship they need to start businesses and take those businesses to the next level. Since 2015, our 20,000 entrepreneurs that we've empowered so far, about half of them are women entrepreneurs. Mm. And these women entrepreneurs have gone on to create multiplier effects in their different communities across all of Africa. So we're mm. very proud of our women entrepreneurs, proud of our women mentors, proud of our women leaders across the HH and UBA groups. As you know, 50% of the board at UBA is female. 
and 40% of our CEOs at S Holdings are female. Yeah. So you see, the, for us, Women's Month is not just in March. Leading it's the literally, world. exactly, the role yeah. model company, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Music to my ears. Absolutely <laughs> love to hear that. Now, a major part of this, of course, is legacy. That's what's being built yes. here, now, right? So, reflecting on the past decade of the Tony Elumelu Foundation entrepreneurship program's journey, what key insights and learnings have been gleaned from its impact on African entrepreneurship and economic development? And moreover, how do these learnings inform the program's strategic evolution and shape its approach to fostering sustainable entrepreneurial ecosystems, unlocking latent potential and of course catalyzing inclusive growth in the years ahead? No, that's such a profound question because the first thing we're seeing is that the scale of interest in entrepreneurship on the continent is enormous. Every year we roll out our applications on January 1 till March 31st for entrepreneurs to go on our platform and apply and we've seen 400,000 applications in any given year and we can fund only 1,000. So imagine 400,000 young people applying for a chance and we can only take less than the percentage of the, that number. So Mr. Limelik often tells himself, am I dashing hopes or am I creating hopes? And so that's why in this next phase, we're particularly interested in partnerships so that we can scale and support more young African men and women. You know, young people on the continent are hardworking. They're creative, they're enterprising, they're intelligent. All they need is that little support in terms of funding, training, and mentorship. And the things that they can achieve are unbelievable. Our entrepreneurs continue to lead the way in their different countries. And I'll give a small instance. You know, when the COVID-19 struck Africa, a lot of our entrepreneurs across all, all of Africa, you know, took up that responsibility in terms of safeguarding their different communities. So we had our entrepreneurs in fashion immediately switch over to creating protective gear, face masks for their different communities. Our entrepreneurs in manufacturing immediately took over to start creating hand sanitizers, soap gels, etc. Because there's that sense of responsibility, there's that sense of initiative and proactivity. And this is what we teach them on our program. You know, Africa will not be transformed without our entrepreneurs playing a critical role. So we want to work with more of our global partners to support additional entrepreneurs in their thousands so that when 400,000 people apply, we're not just selecting 1,000. Hopefully we're selecting 200,000. That's the story that we're trying to achieve. Okay, so much. Your foundation made it to Harvard. Yes. It's now <laughs> one of the case studies at the uh, Harvard uh, Business mm -hmm. School yes. and also Tony Ndumelu's uh, philosophy of Afro-capitalism. Yes. So in a decade, Yes. You have achieved so much, but what are the strategic plans for the future? What are the key milestones yes. for the future as the foundation uh, goes into the next decade? Yes, thank you so much, Dr. Abati. We've now funded about 20,000 entrepreneurs. I want to come back here in the next year or two and tell you that that number is 100,000. That number is 200,000. We want to fund even more entrepreneurs across the entire continent because these entrepreneurs and their businesses are what will transform our continent in this lifetime. Hmm. Well, congratulations and thank you very much, thank so, much you so much, Chris Asoloka, for joining us on the morning show.